Ladies and gentlemen, we are back, and we are about ready to hop into game three on MLG Cloud Kingdom between Stefano and Last. Of course, uh, before we get started, got a little treat for you guys. I know some people have been asking correct. about uh, this and the opportunity to win this, which is basically a case from iBuyPower, which you immediately go to iBuyPower.com slash MLG to yep. enter to win said case, signed by a lot of the professionals who are here playing today in all three of the disciplines of MLG. Yeah, and to emphasize, it is the new line of computers from iBuyPower. It's actually the computer. It's not the case. It's everything, everything. on the outside and inside. It actually it runs StarCraft 2, which is actually probably the only thing you really care about because we understand. Again, iBuyPower.com slash MLG. But without any further ado, Marcus, Stefano is on the ropes down 0-2 right yes, now. Yes, yes. I mean, inches from holding off every single attack, but not quite quite able to deal with all the drops that are being thrown at him. All right, well, both these players appear to be ready. Our our third map is going to be Cloud Kingdom. And let's go ahead and get this game started. Another map, a nightmare to deal with drops and Wings of Liberty. And now here is Heart of the Swarm, where, where medevacs are basically flying Zergling heal buses. Man. Man. I mean, God. you know... You, you know how good of an upgrade it is, but when you see it in the hands of someone who can just make you twist and turn and feel so uncomfortable knowing that, how can I even leave my base when a whole army can be there in a matter of seconds? And I know it seems like it's discovering drops for the first time, but it's like rediscovering drops. It's like going from black and white TV to color. Dude, it is, because I mean, most of the time, drops are a timing. You do them at this point in time in the build because it should be good. But I mean, what Last is doing is going, well, where is his army? Oh, it's there? Well, a drop now is really good. And it's all this in-game judgment from Last again and again and again and again and again. Whenever Stefano thwarts one attack, there's a drop at the opposite end of the map. Let's introduce our players. We've uh, in the southwest position as the pink Zerg. Ladies and gentlemen, on his last leg, it is E.G. Stefano. And up in the top right, a strong Brood War player from Team STX Soul, now rocking hard in StarCraft II. It is last. Stefano, game one with a fairly standard Stefano style of play. Game two, he tried to go with that. Roach rush from damage was done, but not enough. Last in every game so far, overcome just based on his drops alone. Now, how is Stefano going to deal with it this time? The last two games we talked about Mutilus, even in the last game we saw him increase his static defense around some of his bases, but oh. hold the phone. Marcus, someone you is about to put Stefano on the tilt. I yeah. mean, everything Stefano has seen would incur. Whoa, Stefano, Whoa, nice read. Yeah, yeah. Going for pool before gas. O other games he was going hatch, gas, pool to get that zergling speed as fast as possible, but this is the defensive play. It looks like he's going to be going for queen opening. And this is exactly what he needs to stay alive. And it looks like, oh, Stefano sees. Why is that SCV moving from that angle? And he sees it immediately. He knows something is up. What do you do in the situation? Four drones are going to come off. He knows that, uh, well, actually, we have another Marine and an SCV coming in here. So this is going to be even more heavier than it was in the last game. He immediately targets the SCV on the bunker. One drone about ready to go down. He can get rid of both these SCVs, and he will do a lot of damage here, pulling oh. one drone back. And the pool's about to complete, as well as the hatchery at the natural. Oh, looks like all the drones coming off. He does not want any Marines to get up in there, but it looks like the drones are following way, oh way far gosh. north. This is not looking good for Stefano already. He's done this many times before with successful defenses. If he can hold this off long enough to actually perform a counterattack, it's real difficult for Last to hold off in this circumstance, but the drone's pulling back. Will be trying to chill by the oh. bunker. Can they pick off the forward bunker? The drones are going to be falling in huge numbers. Oh, the drones oh, are trapped. Oh, no. The drones are trapped. Oh, oh, Stefano's taking massive hits. And now the Ling's in a limbo line up against four Marines. That is not going to pan out well. Last target firing drones, Marines, whatever he wants. 14 workers to nine. 
last is he may very well win with just a standard two racks cheese over. I think he's going to be able to. The Marines now making their way up. He's hoping the race against time is going to work out here. This uh, oh, this bunker. He's just going to let it burn, knowing the SCVs aren't around. And I think that was the right thing to do. But how many drones is he sitting at? It is nine to sixteen in terms of workers. But you know what? This is done. The game is going to continue. I think what the big danger is going to be is. Will he just mass Marines at this tower, which is what is happening, and move forward? There's no spine crawler there, and the reason why is because any money is going back into drones. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Ling's now for Stefano have to try to find some way to break into the front. It looks like they may get a very lucky pick, annihilating this expansion, but I think Stefano is going to run the risk of a, just a counterattack outright killing yeah, him. Yeah, I, I mean, it, he has to have a spine down now. Uh, yeah, he has to. Zergling spines anything. I mean, this is a rough position for Last to be in, but it's a worse position for Stefano to be in. Oh, God. The Marines are going to move out the moment the Lings are there, and that's exactly what they do. There's absolutely nothing can be done. Six more Lings are on the way. He's going to pull everything, but at least he's going to be losing this natural. Oh, supply block for Stefano. Oh, God. Having to build. The Overlord right now is the worst. If there's some miracle way that Stefano can hold this off, he might be in good position, but he's continuing to have to pull back. The Queen falls! Oh, oh Stefano trying to cut off reinforcements, trying to get those other Zerglings to join in. The he's front is still being mass repaired. He is going to be able to cut off the reinforcements. Now he's going to go back after the natural. The front still getting salted by Zerglings. Little minerals being uh, used there to repair. But man, these Marines just in a great position. He's going to try to pull them back into the main. But I think this is a smart decision by last to go. I'm going to commit to taking this hatchery down. Yep. And come in off of and these. there it is. And then he target fights, takes it down. Stefano is all but gone in this game. Zerglings and Broodlings do their best to pick this Marine count down. And he will eliminate them. But I mean, this is. You just have to go Baneling Bust at this point. There's really all, virtually no other option. But we have not seen a gas put down quite yet. Zergling's going to go out, but, and they're going to find that the two racks have lifted off and are now on their way out. Marines built, rallied back to the base. They're going to be able to take out the Lings that were gnawing at that front door for such a long time. Only one Marine goes down. And uh, keep in mind that the CC was saved and a third was built up. So at this point, I mean, we're just looking at a massive mountain in front of Stefano. I mean, right now it's 15 workers, 17 workers to 22 workers, with three orbital commands up for last. No queen for Stefano, no expansion. Yuck. That's a really, really rough place to be in. Um, and if you consider what uh, Last is going to be able to do, he's going to immediately plop down this command center, and he has uh, the ability to continue to push on pressure if he wants to. Again, there's no offense coming out at all for Stefano, trying to reestablish that natural. He still hasn't taken the gas yet. It's all about his economy and whether or not he can even get it back up to try to put himself in the back of this game. It might be a correct decision to try to take a third hatchery yeah. fairly quickly. It's super risky, but again, whenever you're behind, you have to take a big risk in order to pull back ahead. It looks like these Zerglings will attempt to make a surround and be successful in wow. oh, oh. getting two of the three Marines, losing two of the five Zerglings. I suppose any additional second you can sort of delay your opponent into doing anything is, is, is a good second to have. But we haven't seen that quick third. In fact, we see 300 minerals uh, already. There are the gases uh, thrown down. And uh, is it is the drone heading out? No, not yet. I mean, maybe a macro hatch is a better option in this circumstance because you just there's so many risks, so many things that you just can't defend. And, and I mean, if you have the money for the extra production right now, no, it looks like queens are going to be the choice of Stefano, just going for that all-purpose defense. And weirdly, Stefano is not... I mean, he's far behind, but he's not way far behind. It's On a scale of 1 to 10, it's like a, it's like a 7 and not a 10. There is still some sliver of hope as Stefano's beginning to rebuild, beginning to get these queens up, beginning to spread the creep. The Hellions move up, basic containment, but Last knows he's in it for the long haul, getting the double eBays up. Great, great read. Yeah, and then I want to re-ask a question. How behind do you think he is 
the moment that first and second medevac come out of the starport. It's it's going to be pretty rough. I mean, yeah. Last is doing a smart move. He's going to be doing a Hellion medevac push. Uh, Hellion marine medevac. So, in Stefano's shoes, the only way he can really hold on is with actually exactly what he's doing with this Roach Warren. Just flooding with a bunch of units that the Hellions can't really hurt too much. So now it looks like there's going to be about a minute until those medevacs are at the front door. Well, actually, I guess a little bit less than that. Thanks to that emergency thruster boost. But, I mean, Stefano's holding on strong. He's trying his hardest. He's uh, getting another gas inside his main, going to Lair. Uh, the Roach Warren is about to complete. There, we've got another gas finished up as well. Third command center has been placed for last, so he is going to be uh, just well in, in just great position as far as uh, as far as his economy in relation to Stefano. And you know, let me ask you: obviously, with the with the Hellions getting the Roach Warrens out, if there's additional Marines behind it. We haven't hardly seen any Baneling play out of Stefano. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Roaches try to act like a substitute Baneling, but you need to be in really nice positions. And oh, Stefano has a has a sense of what's up. He's going to pull back. And ooh, this is going to oh, no. oh, it's going to pan out real bad. Roaches are going to fall immediately. Queen's going to fall immediately. Transfuse try to keep the Queen alive. Roaches being flooded out, but I don't know how much longer they're going to be alive. No, not not long. Uh, I mean, the Marines being protected here. Got a nice uh, little marine-filled donut, Hellion donut. It's going to start working on those drones, and the last queen's going to fall. A bunch of roaches are about ready to pop out here, but is it going to be too little too late? The Hellions are going to fall. And Gosh. Last uh, from start to finish has been in complete control, decimating yep. Stefano. Three games back to back. Another Terran player will make it to the round of yes. 16. Yes, has managed to do it. And Stefano says, well played. Last is your victor. Moving on to the round of 16. Certainly putting on some aggression onto Stefano. Stefano unable to deal it. Also, some phenomenal, phenomenal medevac drop play. Doing even a couple things that uh, I feel like were just really brilliant. The splitting up, the faking the army to think I'm going this way, splitting kind of doubling it up. Fantastic job there by last. Yeah, and I mean, now there's only two more round of 32 games to go. Thorzane versus Killer and Pult versus Creator. Thus far, there are only two foreigners to have made it to the round of 16. That would be Sen and Rhett. And of course, the winner of Thorzane Killer will be another non-Koreans, but I mean, all the Korean players coming out in full force and dominating these first rounds of MLG. They are. But congratulations to everyone who has moved through to the round of 16. Keep in mind, those matches are going to be starting pretty soon after the round of 32 completes. We'll be getting through quite a few of those today. And of course, on Sunday, Championship Sunday, we'll not only finish out the bracket, but crown ourselves a winner of the first 2013 MLG event. It's the Winter Championship. Now, I will note that though the next match is going to be cast up here on Stream Red, I will actually be heading over to the full Sail University booth for the next hour to say hello. So if you'd like to come by, run. Run right now. We'll see you there. Guys, thanks for joining us here for yet another match. We're going to take a quick break when we return. Another game for you over the 2013 MLG Winter Championship. We'll be back with more after this.